على عباده الذين اصطفى أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ثم إن ربك للذين هاجروا من بعد ما فتنوا ثم جاهدوا وصبروا إن ربك من بعدها لغفور رحيم يوم تأتي كل نفس تجادل عن نفسها وتوفى كل نفس ما عملت وهم لا يظلمون وضرب الله مثلا قرية كانت آمنة مطمئنة يأتيها رزقها رغدا من كل مكان فكفرت فكفرت بأنعم الله فأذاقها الله لباس الجوع والخوف بما كانوا يصنعون ولقد جاءهم رسول منهم فكذبوه فأخذهم العذاب وهم ظالمون صدق الله العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين <coughs> سورة نحل last night we had read an ayah من كفر بالله من بعد إيمانه إلا من أكرها وقلبه مطمئن بالإيمان under this ayah Hazrat ulama have written a few situations where if a person is made to do something forcefully, does it hold any credibility or not? So in some matters, it does hold credibility and some matters it does not. In the matters of, some, for example, transaction of land, money, these kind of dealings, the internal will of the person has to be there. If somebody forcefully makes them sign a document or say something, hand it over to them or write a will, that does not hold any value in the eyes of Sharia. Ah. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said clearly about three things that there's three things Jidduhunna Jid wa So there's three things that if they are done forcefully they are also valid and if they are not done forcefully and done willingly they are also valid. They are an nikah wa talaq wa raja. So if even on some, somebody is made to accept a woman on gunpoint the nikah is valid. If, if the proper giving and acceptance takes place in the presence of witnesses, even somebody is forcefully made to enter into a nikah, this nikah is valid. Similarly, if somebody is forcefully made to give talaq, their talaq is still is valid. And if somebody is forcefully made to do rujur in certain situations after talaq, it is permissible for the man to go back to their wife. It is still, if they even are forcefully made to do it, it is still valid. And there is wisdoms of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala behind it because if it was let on people's internal will and not then there would be a lot of corruption people would have done that have something and then later on said that we were forced to do it and then turn back from it so there would be a lot of corruption and a lot of problems with it so these three things are specifically mentioned that even if they are done forcefully somebody is made to do those still they are valid so this masala was written under that ayah <coughs> now to the ayah that we decided tonight ثم إن ربك للذين هاجروا من بعد ما فتنوا ثم جاهدوا وصبروا إن ربك من بعدها لغفور رحيم. Those people who <coughs> left their houses, their homes after being persecuted. So the people who had faith or who were kuffar to begin with, with disbelievers and then they brought faith and did hijrat or migrated <coughs> after they were persecuted and they fought in the way of Allah and stood patient surely your Lord is after all that most forgiving very merciful so from this ayah the masala that we learn is that bringing faith entering into faith bring, becoming a Muslim is something that wipes away the sins of the past if somebody has some rights of other creations upon them they definitely have to fulfill those by becoming a Muslim those rights are not uh, lifted away from that person or those burdens or responsibilities but in terms of the matters of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the previous sins are forgiven one becomes a Muslim they start from scratch then good deeds such as migration or fighting in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doing jihad being steadfast and patient over the calamities or challenges that one, one might face in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all these good deeds 
they increase the status of a person and their reward in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but good deeds do not become uh, so if somebody has done some bad deeds then they have to repent on those and if there is some rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remaining on someone for example somebody has missed prayers or fasting of the month of Ramadan or did not pay zakat or did not go for hajj and they are supposed to go for hajj then those things they still have to do good deeds will not become uh, you know an expiation in that way that they do, did this or they spent in charity now they don't have to fast or they spent in charity or so much in charity and now they don't have to pray or they did so many good deeds and now they don't have to pray or do those things no those good deeds those if, if somebody has sins the repentance is still on them inna rabbaka min ba'di hala ghafoor rahim surely this is because your Lord is most forgiving, very merciful. يَوْمَ تَأْتِي كُلُّ نَفْسٍ تُجَادِلُ عَنْ نَفْسِهَا Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us about one of the scenes of the hereafter that on that day that this forgiveness will be given and in the previous verses a great punishment will be given. It will be all this ha will happen on such a day when everyone will come pleading for themselves. So there is a hadith mentioned if I remember correct but uh, Ka'b al-Ahbar radiallahu an that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and other anbiya all of them apart from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam even those anbiya will forget about their people and would only talk about themselves so one narration is that the hellfire would exhale once and everybody would fall to their knees in sajda before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> even had Ibrahim khalilullah alayhi salam he would also say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Ya Allah by virtue of the station of khullat the station of extreme close friendship that you called me your khalil I beseech you I only ask you about myself that forgive me similarly had Abbas radiallahu anhu narrated that on that day even the person's own soul and the body will start fighting with each other and the soul would say that Ya Allah forgive me because the in its essence the body did all the bad deeds I had no arm I had no heart uh, and I had no hands I had no feet the body did those bad deeds and the body would say that I was lifeless the soul made me all do, do all those things so the hadith mentions that the Prophet ﷺ has told us that Allah SWT will present an example that what about a blind person and a person who cannot walk and they together steal something that the blind person cannot see but they can pick and the uh, the person who cannot move they sit on the shoulders of or, or, or guide that uh, blind person and they uh, together steal something so who should be punished and they would say that they should be punished equally so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish the body and the soul equally for bad deeds may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us such a horrific day may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us but that day every soul will fight for their own self and forget about everyone else except for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who would intercede on, not on the behalf of only his Ummah and the believers but also on the behalf of the Kuffar as well that he would intercede that Ya Allah let the proceedings of the Day of Judgment begin so this is his uh, something the great intercession the general intercession that would be in the favor of every single uh, <coughs> creation of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala وَتُوَفَّى كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَا عَمِلَتْ وَهُمْ لَا يُظْلَمُونَ On such day, on that day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, everyone will be given in full for what they did. وَهُمْ لَا يُظْلَمُونَ And no injustice, they will not be wronged. No injustice will happen that day. وَضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا قَرْيَةً كَانَتْ آمِنَةً مُطْمَئِنَّةً يَأْتِيهَا رِزْقُهَا رَغَدًا مِنْ كُلِّ مَكَانٍ This ayah talks about, according to most Mufassirin, talks about the people of Makkah. There Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you an example of a town كانت آمنة مطمئنة يأتيها رزقها رغدا من كل مكان they were secure content with their sustenance coming in in plenty from every place فكفرت بأنعم الله then they turned ungrateful to the bounties of Allah سبحانه وتعالى which is that they belied the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم فأذاقه الله لباس الجوع والخوف so for seven years they were there was extreme famine in Makkah so much so that Abu Sufyan who was the leader of the Kuffar at that time he came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam begging that make dua to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala you are a person who came and who taught us and advised us to do good to 
your family and to be nice to your family. The things that we have done, the males of the society have done it. So the males deserve to be punished. But what about the children and the women? So the famine was such that the people of Makkah were forced to eat even things that are not suitable for eating like the camel hair and leather and those kind of filthy stuff even they were supposed they were eat they had resorted to eat those things so he came to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam made dua and also uh, asked the arab other, other <coughs> arab communities to send food to them also it is reported in some narrations the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam sent some food to the kuffar to the dying kuffar from Medina as well so because of their kufr allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fadaqaha allah libas aljuu'i wal khawf allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them taste a dress of hunger and fear and the meaning here is that it was so severe that it had surrounded them from all sides like libas does or like dress does it bima kanu yasna'un as a recompense of what its people used to do wa laqad ja'ahum rasulun minhum and of course a messenger from among themselves had come to them fakadzabuhu but they rejected him fa akhadhahum al adab wa hum zalimun so the punishment seized them when they were the wrong doers may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from all sorts of punishments and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us those who are steadfast on our iman amin ya rabbal alamin may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from all horrors of the day of judgment and may give us lives that are uh, successful in the eyes of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rabbana taqabbal minna innaka antas samiul alim wa tub alaina innaka antat tawwabur rahim وصلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين امين برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين